Is this thing on? Are you ready, Matt? You're listening to Box Office Avengers with Matt Diaz and Ernesto Santos. Good evening, folks. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you. We know each other. He's a friend from work. And now we're going to move over to our final spoiler review of the week, which is Hillbilly Elegy, where Ernesto, you really want to watch this movie. And, and for good reason. I have a lot to say. This movie was fucking fantastic. Really? I don't know about you, but I loved this movie. And I was in it from start to finish. Really? Like okay. I thought like I just thought it was so good. I thought the store the score was good. I thought the way the story was structured was great. Um like there's just so many great moments. Like in the beginning you see JD when he go down to the creek and he gets drowned. Um those kids start drowning him and that old man when they come his family comes to rescue him and that old man beats the shit out of that kid. <laughs> like I thought that was crazy, you know? Um that that scene when Amy Adams is in the she's in the car with her son. And he's saying he says like all that messed up shit to her. Yes. And then she loses it and then that then she loses it on him. Yeah. And then they go to that lady's house and then the family and the cops get involved. I mean, come on. And this is a memoir, so this is somebody's life that we're seeing being played out here. Yes. Like, I don't know. It just, it was very raw. It was very real. There was a lot of emotion. To me, Mal Mal, Glenn Close's character, I can see why she was nominated. Because to me, she was one of the standouts in the entire film. Like, I loved her Terminator analogy. And granted, yes. after I watched the film, I didn't realize that that part was in the trailer. But to me, that was a key point for her um, for her, her character. And kind of like getting, seeing her view on the world. Like saying, you know, there's three kind of Terminators. There's good ones, there's bad ones, and there's ones just trying to figure it out. I don't remember what her exact terminology is, but like, she makes that analogy, and I just thought it was, like, really important for to hear that. Like, it, it just made a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. You know, like, how many times have you seen Terminator? You know, and then she lit her husband on fire when he would yeah. come home drunk. That, that was, was crazy. crazy. That was nuts. <laughs> Mama lit, lit her up, lit him on fire. <laughs> Like, You're not oh, gonna hit me again. Yeah, <laughs> boom, flame. It's like, and then like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> she didn't you know, care I, at that point. I thought the movie did a good job showing cycles of abuse and how it can continue or how the cycle can be broken. Like you see Amy Adams, what she saw, what her mom and her dad went through with his, his al- alcoholism, and then like how yeah, it caused her to go down that addict you know addiction past but like how jd saw it and said well i don't want i need to break the cycle like i need you know he he saw that as a way to get out not as to be trapped inside of that you know and then the whole thing with mama sending him straight like that scene where where he throws the calculator outside the door (laughs) i'm sorry he throws it outside the car window yeah and she just has that she just sets him straight you know you know, when she brings his, when his friends come over and she starts asking him questions and she said, get the hell off my floor. She just get <laughs> like, out of my house. You got a job? No. You got any life aspirations? No. Then get the hell out of my porch. What are you doing? Get off my those porch. Are my, those are my friends, man. Molly. Those are your friends. They'll, you got to get new friends. Yeah. Or I don't care what you do. <laughs> you can get new friends or you can find a new place to live. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. My favorite scene is the one with the calculator. Glenn Close's performance in that scene in particular was phenomenal. Like to me, she was she was the standout character in this yeah. film. Um, great film, has heart, powerful, teaches you about purpose and honoring your past. You know, because at the end of it, he was very he was very grateful for having going through what he went through and having those people, you know, in his life because they made him who he was today. And, you know, that, that can be said about anybody, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised that this movie is not nominated for best picture. Like to me, it's, to me, it was all around. It was incredible. You you know, Ernesto, you, um, before I say what I, before I say what I want to say, uh, it's okay if you don't feel the same. No, no, no. I understand that. I understand, but I want to. I want to say before I say something, I want to give you the Rotten Tomato score because you said that you were surprised that um, the film didn't get nominated for Best Picture. Unfortunately for the film, it's been. And I think this is harsh. 
It's sitting at a 26%. Really? Yes, with an, with an 86 audience score. Obviously, there is a, a hard difference between what the critics thought and what the audience thought. And I, I think 86 might be a little bit generous. I'm probably more in the low 70s, but like, like not 26. 26 is a harsh rating for a movie that I, I enjoyed. It was a hard watch, though. I will give it that. There was a lot of hard scenes in there that like... Oh, yeah. You just mean like with like drugs and addiction and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it was it was like a lot of like, it, and for lack of better terms, a lot of things could like, if if you weren't if you're caught off guard with the narrative, some people can see that that being a little triggering. Mm. Um, but yeah, but that's this guy's life. You know, you I know. can't look at it like you know that's that's what he went through. Like he, yeah. he didn't he didn't get he didn't have a choice either, and he went to law school and got his shit together. That is correct. Like that, like that's what you when people look at that kind of stuff. Like that's how you should look at this kind of story. Like look at all the crazy shit that he went through, and he still said, you know what? I still need to get my shit together and get my life together because I don't want to go down that same path. Right. Uh, I Glenn Close was. Like you said, by far the best thing about this movie. Correct. 100%. She was fantastic. And I thought, honestly, I'm like, we we're I don't know, we were about halfway to the movie and she's only made a couple appearances. Uh, but obviously she really took charge toward the end of the movie. And every time she was in there and you see that, that face that she's making with the, with the kind of very subtle makeup. But she has that face of, like, disapproval all yes. the time. Yes. It's, it's just like, like, you can do better. And it was like even that moment where... Like, you know, JD was like, Mama, can I live with you? And was like, no, that's not going to sit right with your mom. I can't, I can't do that to her. And then when, when Mama's in the hospital and she realized that JD got, was it, she got, JD got into a car accident, right? Was that the, the they, uh, for that? Yeah, because he was out with his friend. He was out with um, his mom's boyfriend, her mom's boyfriend's son and his friends. They were out, they were smoking and then they went out to – they went to go trash some store or something, and then they tripped the alarm, and then they drove away in the car, and then dur- during when they were driving away, he crashed it into a ditch. Right, right. And and so then with that, you know, she, he – Mamma felt that the, that the uh, you know, I guess the mother was being reckless and therefore um, got uh, – you know, took charge at that moment and said, hey, you're coming with me. And I'm assuming, anyway, that he lived with the grandmother for the rest of his childhood. Yeah, that's how I saw it. He saw it right. until he went to college. Yeah, because I mean, obviously she. Saw or actually, until he went to the Marines, because there's the that Marines. one scene when she was there kissing. If you notice that, like he kisses her and hugs her goodbye, and he kind of just like waves at his mom and says goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like it kind of like, and even at a young age. But obviously, you can tell that he was different. JD was different, obviously. Yes. Yeah. He he didn't want he like he, he felt like he wanted to be part of this family, but felt like not everything added up and needed to be. And also, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, especially toward the end, he was a little shit. Like he was he was acting <laughs> oh, out. Oh yeah. And, yeah. He was definitely like not a perfect child by any means. Um. But you know, he just and it, it's it's funny because again, just having people know the the influence that people can have in your life. Like he, the grandmother saw that we can get out of this. You are, you are, are, our legacy. You gotta, you can do better. You can get us out of this. And I have potential and I see potential in you to go further. Um, the only f- things that I felt that I felt off about this movie was with Amy Adams. Um, even though her performance was fantastic, like, like you said, the car chasing scene, pretty much, I mean, even, even the scene where we were, we caught up with her in the, in the hospital, like on present day. And, he was like, oh, I guess your law degree can't get us out of this one or something along those lines. It was very, like, judgmental. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, she put up defenses up really quick. Always. Uh, always. And for lack of a better term, that could either escalate to 10,000 or she can keep it railing as just snarky remarks. You don't know which – it's, like, night and day which version you're going to get. And you yeah. can even tell at certain points of her life that she was, you know, working in the hospital, doing pretty good, and then she has a relapse. Whether it's with her temper, with drugs, with with something along those lines that just you know kind of set her off the edge, and then you know now she has to go to rehab or uh, some other medical facilities, 
And the only thing that by the end of it, I felt like there was no growth for her character. And but maybe that was the point. What do you mean? The last title card talks about her being sober for six years. That was the title card, not the movie. But that was that, the tie-in to the end of the movie. Maybe there was no like, how else would they would show you that she had been sober? Like, would it right, been and, more effective for them to just show you that, or for them to just, hey, it's a it's a nod at towards the end because the story is not about. Her. So, I mean, I get what you're saying, but what I'm yes. saying is like the story's not about her. It's mainly about him. But that's the, that at least gives you a close. That one sentence gives you a closeout in her arc, as opposed to giving you some some like cheesy reenactment of what might have what might be a signification of that. Right. I, I think I think for me, I was more. I really just wanted maybe to see that on screen. I get that. And and maybe they kind of did because the last time we saw her character, she was in bed, uh, like she was about to do was a heroin. Yeah. Yeah, she was about to do it, then JD stopped her. Like she went to the bed and cried and she's like, Can you just stay with me? And, you know, a, again a big turning point in the movie was JD being like, No, I I can't stay with you. Like, uh, you know, her her daughter, his sister was coming in to kinda take that shift, but he's like, I got I really gotta do this. Like I yeah. can't I can't It's important for him to it, get to it, the next stage of his life. Exactly. Like, you know, and even like, hey, I really, like, even you can tell like even from that moment, he, cause he visited his hometown for what, maybe 12 hours, if that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was like, I'm only here, but like, you can tell that in that 12 hours, he was able to kind of see how far he's come, see where his family still is, see where he came from, and maybe a turning point for him to be like, I got to let go, but not a hundred percent let go like maybe i've been too too reserved like too like far away and like neglecting the family i gotta stay with the family but also remember my goals and like i can't let i can't let these events hold me back and you know and it didn't and honestly even though the movie was two and a half hours no sorry not two and a half hours like two two about two hours and what ten minutes or so uh yeah it was about two hours yeah a little over two hours or maybe a little under two hours i'm not entirely sure what the runtime was but it was close to the two hour mark and and with that i felt like i could have watched more hour 56 hour 56 almost two hours i felt like i could have watched more of that movie yeah to see but that's a good thing you've watched almost two hours a little window into his life and after two hours you're like i want to watch more like you were in it to watch more. Yeah, but I feel like I wanted to see. I feel like that that where the, the movie kind of ended, like somewhat abruptly, in my opinion. Like, okay, he got the interview, but then what? And then the then what was just the the uh, the title cards. And then I just feel like, and then he got a family, and then he got the law degree, and it was like yeah. all these happy little endings, which I wished we might have seen. Or, and maybe structure the story a little bit or, like, maybe balance through timelines a little bit more to kind of see that full arc. I don't know. I just felt a little empty inside. Like, I felt like I was moved, yet empty at the same time. You like wanted I, more. I wanted a little bit more. And so that doesn't fault the – I fault the movie a little bit for me because I felt like I didn't get the complete story. And I just went on Wikipedia to find out what happened next, and those were the title cards. And okay. And so that was, like, my only criticism with, with it. But I do appreciate – kind of you know seeing where you are in life going back to where you came from seeing the hardships you had like those carry with you and we saw that with the the dinner scene when he was like visiting all those different i guess law firms right mm-hmm. yes yeah he was visiting and he didn't know law- he didn't know what spoons to use like right that was pretty funny or like that one scene he has with the girlfriend where he's talking about syrup and he says syrup instead of syrup, syrup. yeah he doesn't yeah. say syrup he says syrup syrup yeah <laughs> And so, like, he has that, like, you know, that, I guess that, what, that, not Western, but, like, that, that draw, southern draw, southern yeah. draw. yeah. Um, and obviously, like, the Hillbilly County is where he was. And so, like, it's almost like he didn't belong in this, in this world, and they were kind of judging him for that. But then, like, you can also see, which I also liked JD, adult JD's performance, was that you can see that he could easily go off the deep end as well. Like, he had that anger, too. Like when yeah, he was when he was when he was rushing to like his wherever his mom was staying and then when they got there he was like he like that guy threw all of the stuff over the balcony and then like he immediately Oh like, yeah. He rushed in there, banged down the door, like he was about to do some damage. 
And like, that's the same thing his mom would do. Like, you can see that he's not that far off at that moment of his life to get off the deep end if he goes down the wrong path. But you know that he's trying to, like, you know, carp him, what's the word, like, uh, like bring himself together. Contain himself. Contain himself, right. To be like, okay, nope, I'm better than this. I need to move forward. And, you know, I've gotten this far. I can't, I can't lose this. I don't and know. So, I don't blame. I don't blame him because I, I think all of us would have reacted the same way he did. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, this was a memoir that JD wrote. You know, the real life yeah, JD, JD Vance, wrote yeah. that. JD Vance. Um, I know it was, it was. It was a really interesting movie. I, I definitely. I, I find it really engaging. Like the you know you kind of really get wrapped up in the family drama and it was elevated by those performances. Um, so I think, you know, overall, I think, you know, based on what the critics are giving, it's way too harsh. This is, yeah. this is a good movie. Like it was like, it's, it's a, it's a hard drama though. Um, that I, that I think that, you know, you have to go in with a certain mindset to be like, you're not going to laugh. You know, it might be some funny moments. This is like a, you know, not a dark drama, but like it's a, uh, what's the word? Like, a. You know, you have to, you know, be ready for it. Basically. You got to be in the mood for something like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like we're not going to see, you know, some happy moments in here. It's we're going to, you know, hit some hard hitting stuff. But I, I liked it. I, I maybe not as much as you did. Uh, maybe not. But, but, maybe but you not. know, but you know what? I'm a sucker for, for like a like a good family drama. Okay. Um, I, I feel like I maybe want a little bit more from the story, and that's kind of that's kind of where I was at with that. Uh, also, I was surprised that Hans Zimmer was the composer. Yeah, Hans Zimmer. Was, Hans Zimmer. And I'm like, what? What? What are you doing in this movie? You're, you're, where, where's Wonder Woman? Is she gonna <laughs> pop out here somewhere? Wonder Maybe, Woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was, I was shocked. I'm like, okay, you know, and he worked with somebody else as well. So like, and it, and it was so funny because it was the opening scene where you were seeing some of the credits, and they had like this little like tune that I was like bobbing my head about and i was like okay i like this right and i was typically it's like if very I like, hopeful i remember yeah and i was like uh and typically when i when i feel that in a movie when the movie is over i'll go back and you know look up the the score and see if i like any of the tracks but it was since it was like the credits rolling at the beginning i saw his name popped up I'm like of course of course is that guy of course i'm bobbing my head it's Hans zimmer Hans zimmer <laughs> what else would you expect <laughs> exactly Hey, thanks for listening to this edited version of our weekly podcast, Box Office Bingers. If you want to hear the full version of all of our episodes, which includes us discussing entertainment news, movie and TV reviews, guest interviews, and other things we've been watching, you can find us on wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button and find us on our social media channels on Instagram at box office underscore bingers, Facebook at box office bingers, email at box office bingers at gmail.com. And Matt, we're even on the Tiki Takis. We're on the Tiki Takis at box office bingers. Once again, thanks for listening.